here, Anything Bags. Welcome back to part six of Valentina Ross's back build. Just wanted to say thank you to all of those who have watched all the other parts and I hope that you are really enjoying them so far. I'm really excited to get going. So without further ado, let's open the box and continue the build. going to put the box to one side. Okay, we have issue 22, 23, 24, 25 and 26. Wow. Yeah. And we have lots of goodies in this box. We're all covered over, so this is going to be a surprise. Oh, that's heavy. Okay. And we have that. Wow, lots of goodies. And in here, oh, what have we got here? Okay. Dear Modeler, we at Dear Gustini strive for excellence in everything we do and are committed to bring you closer to your passions by delivering you the best modelling experience possible through our collections. But unfortunately, in order to achieve this, when faced with adversity, we sometimes have to take difficult decisions that we really don't want to. I'm not going to read all this out, but it looks like there's an increase in subscription price. Okay. So, thank God I'm not paying for this subscription. It's my friend. So, um, he will have the um, privilege of paying the extra. Okay. Right. Let's have a look at each issue as we go along. So, again, I know I keep saying this, but the pictures are magnificent. Winning at Mugello. Valentino scored nine Grand Prix victories on the Mugello circuit, including seven in a row. There he is with his hand up. Ah, one! <laughs> I think I'm a bit, um, trounced. <laughs> so I've got the giggles. Um... Just to inform you that I have been to Mugello and I saw Rossi on the podium and he was third. Okay, which was brilliant to watch him. Let's see what else we have. This article, it looks like um, it's written about winning at Mugello. Okay, the Mugello circuit was Valentino's favourite. And the Italian rider won there multiple times, including this famous victory in 2007. Can't remember the date that I went to Mugello. It was around... It was around 2017, 2018, not sure. Um, but, yeah, it was brilliant. Okay, let's have a look here. His records at Mugello. Um, it's got nine wins. Um... From 1997 through to 2008, one second place, 1998, three third places, 2009, 2014 and 2015, six pole positions, 2001 through to 2016, and three fastest laps, 1999, 2001 and 2009. Wow. Ah, oh, look here. In 2004, after two consecutive fourth places in Spain and France, Valentino wanted to avoid a repeat of his result, of this result, so his helmet featured artwork of a fourth place finisher's medal made from wood. There it is. There's Roman numerals. Perfect. Wow, look at that sea of fans. Valentino Rossi's fans cheer him on after his 2007 victory. OK. 
Okay, how magnificent. Looks like we get cylinder head and gasket in this edition. So, where is that? <laughs> you can tell that I don't know anything about bikes, don't you? Just know how to ride one. And that's um, debatable. Um, okay. These are all, as you can see, covered up. So I'm going to take them out. And that's really, really heavy there. And I'm going to leave them there because... I actually don't know what's what. Okay. Let's leave them there. Okay. So, but in this um, edition, we get cylinder head and gasket. And then, um, again, the assembly of it all. Put that there. And we have... Um, Actually, that's kind of getting in the way. Let's put them back away. I'm not very decis decisive today, am I? Um, no worries, we'll get there. Um, yeah. In 2004, rain interrupted the race after 17 laps. When the race resumed for the remaining six laps, Rossi went on to win his first Italian GP for Yamaha. Brilliant. This article uh, is about the 2004 season, race by race, the Italian DP. So, perfect. Okay, that's 22. 23. Catalan GP 2009, a miraculous overtake. The race was decided on the very last corner with Ross's epic passing of Lorenzo. Oh, remember that. Um, the victory at Montemello was the turning point in 2009 championship, putting Valentino Rossi back in the lead and inflicting a crushing defeat on his rival and teammate, Jorge Lorenzo. Okay, Rossi's records at Montemello, one triple pole win and fastest lap, 2001. 10 wins from 1997 to 2016, 4 pole positions 2001 to 2007, 6 fastest laps 1998 through to 2005, 5 second places 2003 through to 2015 and 1 third place 2000. Lovely. I love those colours. This picture says it all, really, doesn't it? Valentino holds an incredible record on the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, in the 13 years from 1997 to 2009. He reached the podium every single time. Lovely. In this edition, we get oil filter and pipe work. <laughs> it's looking interesting. More and more. Okay, that's what we're going to end up with there. Can you see that? <laughs> that's what I'm hoping to end up with anyway. And then we've got the step-by-step, -step, the assembly. Okay. Here we've got Montemello was of particular importance for the 2004 championship as Valentino snatched victory from Gibbonau on his home track. Looking very particularly pleased with himself there. And this article is about Catalan. 2004 season. Okay. Perfect. So, that's 23. 
issue 24. Nice wheelie there. Yellow 4 to 6, the importance of being seen. From the very beginning, Valentino decided his future image would depend on the colour yellow. Wow, look at that. Just as a note, um, when we have gone to watch the GP, we always sit in the Rossi stand and have got free flags. Um, they give these out for free. Um, and which is really exciting. It's always nice to get something free. Um, and we have actually um, bought the official um, Rossi t shirt um, whilst we they were selling them whilst we was in the stands as well. So, in one of my um, videos, I'm going to wear that t shirt. As you've noticed, I have wore a different t shirt each time. And this was bought for me, um, this one. Um, I don't know whether I dare kind of tell you what WLF means, um, but I think all Rossi fans will know what WLF it means. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, this is one of the T-shirts. Um, so I'm going to try um, and wear a different T-shirt each time. So I think I'll end up buying some T-shirts. Okay. Okay, well, in any part of the world, seeing a yellow 46 was an instant reminder of a champion who also possessed a unique mar marketing skill, as shown here in Miss Arno in 2016. He certainly did. He knew how to sell himself his number and everything um, around MotoGP. And in my opinion, and if you disagree with this, put it in the comments below. Um, in my opinion, he actually put MotoGP on the map um, because his name everyone knows, even if they don't watch MotoGP. Okay. <laughs> I remember him wearing that helmet. The success of Valentina's extravagant helmets, look at that one, um, depended not only on the creativity of the Italian champion, but also on the talent of his friend, the designer Aldo Drudi. Is that how you pronounce it? Aldo Drudi. Hmm, maybe. So his helmets are brilliant. Um, the success of Valentino's extravagant helmets depended not only on the great creativity of the Italian champion, but also on the talent of his friend, the designer Aldo Drudi. In this edition, we get cylinder block and upper crankcase. <laughs> okay. And then it shows how we assemble everything. And then we have here. In 2004, Valentino dealt another severe blow to his rival, Jubinau at Assen, riding in his wheel tracks throughout the race and passing him on the last lap. Oh. And then 2004 season, the race by race article, the Dutch Grand Prix. Perfect. Okay, that's issue 24. Issue 25. Valentino and video games. As well as being a champion on the track, Valentino would also become a video game hero. I didn't even know that about Rossi. I didn't even know he played video games. If that's what it's about. Okay. Valentino loved video games and gamers loved him so much that it was very easy to find recordings on the internet featuring people competing as him on a console or computer. That's interesting. So he's there obviously playing a video game and everyone is um, watching him.
In the eight times Rossi competed in the Brazilian or Rio Grand Prix, he won six events spanning all the classes he entered. Here, Valentino is racing to victory in the 250cc class in 1999. Wins in every class in Brazil. Rossi's record in Brazil. One triple victory pole and fastest lap, 2003. Six victories, 1997 through to 2003. One pole position, 2003. Four fastest laps, 1997, 1999, 2001, 2003. Okay, here we get the crankcase. That might be the item that's really, really heavy. Okay. And then... The assembly. <laughs> okay, that's going to be again interesting. The tension of the sporting rivalry between Gibernau and Rossi was growing. In Rio, each wanted to take points off the other, but both crashed out of the race. Article is the Rio GP. Issue 25. And last but not least in the box today, we have issue 26. Rossi's pre-race rituals. The ritual actions performed by Rossi before a race were, were no mere superstition but part of an essential effort designed to give him maximum focus. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. All riders follow a ritual before a race, but none of them did it with as much mathematical precision as Valentino, who repeated the same gestures in the same order. That's when he was teammates with Jorge Lorenzo there. Valentino's ritual actions continued right up to the grid and just before the start. Not sure what his rituals were. Um, I have to read the article. Um, but yeah, I'll look forward to reading that article. Crankcase and clutch parts. So we're starting with clutch. And then the assembly here. And last but not least, 2004 season race by race article, the German GP. Issue 26. Okay, shall we get going? Cylinder head and gasket. to work out what is the cylinder head and gasket in here. That's not it. That's too heavy. I believe it's this. Right, okay, I believe it's this. I'm going to open it and say if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, we'll still have to open it anyway. So let's have a look. Ah, oh, my bin is not behind me, but I'm going to chuck it behind there anyway. Okay. And we have the all-important screws. Right, let's um, see what we've got. Chuck that there. 
And let's open this. I think I nearly um, stabbed myself in the face there. Yeah, it's the right package. Right, in this edition we get cylinder head, gasket, four dummy knots. Is everything so cute in this? It's tiny. Okay. And then two tight B screws and despair. Usually when you're building things you don't want things left over, but we're gonna have lots of screws left over. Um yeah, which would be good. Okay. See what we do today. Okay. Don't want that to fly away. Step one. Take the cylinder head and the four dummy knots provided with this issue. That's that. This. Step two, for this assembly session, you will need a pair of tweezers and some long nose pliers. Ah, that's what I could have done in the last session. Um, no, session four um, as well. I don't know if I've got long nose pliers. I do have this. Just getting some now. <laughs> That's the beauty of not seeing what's coming. Um, we don't know what tools we need. Okay. So we've got tweezers, long nose pliers here, and we have some more tweezers. So I'm not sure which type we need. Some toolbox. Step three, hold the cylinder head shown in the photo. The yellow circles indicate the two holes for the first pair of dummy knots. Okay, that's there. This is, can you see that? Metal. It's pretty heavy. That's where we're putting the dummy knots in there. Okay. It is the right way, isn't it? Yeah. Step four, using the tweezers, insert the first dummy knot, noting which way up it goes. Then use the long nose pliers to push the knot fully into place. If it feels tight, you can enlarge the hole slightly by using a drill. Okay. I'm going to use these ones first. Look how tiny that is. I don't know if you can see. That is tiny. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, <laughs> we try that one again. <laughs> it's good job that it didn't go in the floor because I wouldn't be able to find it. Right, let's try again. I'm going to put it down this time. Done it. Look, that's fiddler. Do this one. We don't want to lose them. Yeah. Oh. Done. Okay. That was Fiddler. And I'm glad I didn't have to use a drill. I probably killed myself using a drill. <laughs> okay. 
Step 5. Follow the same process to fit another knot into the second hole sh as shown in step 3. So, yeah, I've done that. I'm ahead of myself. Step 6. Turn the cylinder block around to locate two more holes for the second pair of dummy knots. Let's do it. Yes. Oh, getting overexcited now. Oh, that went in. Come on. Yes. Right. This one. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, done. That went on the floor. I heard it go. Thank God. I've got a sweat on that. This is tricky. Done and nothing lost. Okay. Fourth and last, that's step eight, fourth and last knot which I've done. Final result with the four knots in place, the cylinder head should look like this. Store it carefully with the unused parts for future assembly sessions. Okay. Perfect. So. <laughs> okay, we need to stop it. Let's stop playing now. All right. And this needs to be stored, I imagine. I'm going to try and unbend that. Oh, I'll just make sure we're done. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Issue 22, done. 23. Oil filter and pipe work. This is this bag here. Now, yeah, we're going to need it. Okay, let's open this. Right. Rigid pipe. Okay, I'm going to put these over here, out the way. Leaves us more room. Wow. Look at those. Right, a rigid pipe. That's this. B pipe distributor. <laughs> These plastic. Perfect. Protective cover, which is C, which is in here. What's that? Nice. 
the oil filter, huh? And flexible hose. Very interesting. Okay. Step one, collect the cylinder head cover provided with issue 14 and assembled in issue 15. Okay, so we have our box with all of our stuff in it. Here. Goodies. So we've got loads of things in there. Okay. Let's see what we need. I think no, that's that. Exhaust there. I'm not opening now. I think it might be this. Yes. Okay. Carefully pack all this away. Cylinder, right, collect the cylinder head cover provided with issue 14 and assembled in and cylinder head gasket and two type B screws. Gasket. <laughs> There. Okay. Oh. It's just told me to wrap that up. Okay. Um, and two type B screws provided with issue 22. Step 2. Remove the protective film from the gasket as shown in the circular photo so you can stick this side to the underside of the cylinder head cover as shown in the photo below okay so we're sticking this to this right let's have a go at it Over there. Look at that. <laughs> Excellent. Step three place the cylinder head cover on the cylinder head. Making sure that both parts are aligned correctly, the lo small log circled in blue must be on the same side as the, of the cylinder head as the tunnel casting indicated by the arrow. Just double check in. That goes on there. Turn the assembly over and locate the two holes circulated, circled in yellow, which are where you need to insert two type B screws in the next step. Okay. 
That's fine. And we need a screw. And Tony, who's been watching these videos, has given me a tip. Um, he said, if the screws don't go in, um, put some oil, got WD-40 here, um, and coat the screw and it will go in much easier. So, what I'm going to do, I don't know if this will work or not, um, is I'm going to put some oil on this plate here. Ready? Thank you for the tip, by the way. And um, let me put that back on. And we'll, I can pick them up and just pop them in um, there. Okay. So, using the screwdriver, tighten the two type B screws fully secure to fully secure the cylinder head. Actually, I'm going to do, see it's magnetic, no, is that too big? Do I think that might be too big for that? Oh, damn. That's too small. <laughs> okay, try that one. That's a nice effect. I didn't think I'd done it, but I have. Go in. That's loose. Let's put some more. Okay. 
try not to do it too tight. My screws are all the way in. Maybe it's meant to be a bit loose, I don't know. No, that's it. Right, okay. So, um, with a cylinder head and its cover properly assembled, the gasket should appear as a thin black line between the two parts. There. <laughs> nice. Okay. Step seven, take the rigid pipe and hose received with this number, parts A and E, so that's that one, and this one, let's put these to one side, and fit one end of the hose into the lug on the rigid pipe indicated by the circle and arrow in, in the inset photo, there. So we are fitting that way. That's tiny. That to that. Is it that one? Yes. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> that. Okay. Final result. After this assembly session, the components should look like this. As always, store the parts that have not been used so that they do not get lost. Whoa. That is really heavy. We've got that. Okay. Put that out there, put that there, and I'm going to, no, actually this will be better, put them in there, a space crew, that could go in the box. Wrap this back up. Perfect, issue twenty three. We're getting there. Twenty 
full. Cylinder block and upper crankcase. Okay, I can see that in that bag, so I know it's this bag. That's heavy. And it's metal. It's way too, that is. <laughs> I hope I don't ruin this build. Okay, so we've got the cinder block, upper crankcase. Five screws and a spare. There. And let's see what we do with this. Step one, take the cylinder head you assembled in issue 23 with the cylinder block, upper crankcase and four of the type B screws you received with this issue. So let's unwrap again. Four of these screws. Step two, fit the cylinder head onto the cylinder block as shown, noting which way round the parts go. Where have they got it? Turn the assembly over and locate the two holes circled in yellow into which you will insert the fixing screws in the next step. Okay, so let's have a look what they've got. They've got that that way, and it's on there that way. That's pretty heavy altogether there. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see that. There are the two screws we've just put in. And there are the screws there that I think we're going to be screwing in. Step four, fix the parts together with two type B screws, making sure you tighten them fully. Let's put, have we got any more oil on here? There's a little bit more, because that worked last time. It went in really well. Thank you, Tony. Okay.
But I'm gonna get is another light um, because this is um, work that you definitely need um, to have some light. Need a torch, I think. I'll get um, an overhead light or an overhead torch. Okay. That's still a little bit of this in there. You can turn a little bit more. That's still a little bit of this. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Make sure you tighten them fully. So on this one, they are telling you to um, make sure. They are fully tightened. Go down there. Look at that. Okay. Step five. Now fit the upper crank case to the base of the cylinder block. The arrows indicate the fixing holes in the two parts which you need to align. That's this. The parts should fit together like this with the fixing holes aligned as shown by the yellow circles. So they're the two yellow circles and it is facing that way up. And that is that way. So, is that where it's aligned? Yes. Nice, look at that. It's in nice low. Okay. Step seven, fit the parts together with the two type screw B screws, making sure you tighten them fully. Now oh, no, where that goes. Let's do this. Get some oil. Two, we're going further. Don't know if you can see that. Look at that, I've screwed it. Cool. I think that one can go in. 
little bit more. Wow, I've done that. Yeah. Okay. Um, fix parts together with two times. Yep, done that. Final result at the end of the assembly. The engine of your Yamaha M1 is starting to take shape and should look like this. Keep the spare screw safe for later. Wow. It's different colours of metal there. Don't that look amazing? Look inside. I've just screwed them. Okay. Right. That's it for this. So, I'm going to keep those two screws. Put them with my collection. I'm going to end up with quite a few screws. No parts here, have I? No, okay. I'm so excited, this is great. Okay, 20. I'm assuming this is us. So let's carefully get into that. Oh, we have gifts. Perfect. Okay. That's really, really heavy. Look at that. Look at the detail. Look. That's crazy. Okay, let's see what we're doing with this. So... We've got a crankcase, micro switch. Ooh. That's, right, so I'm not taking it out because it's tiny. Okay. Might be able to see that. It's got some wire sticking on. Let's take it out. I'm too excited now. Okay. We'll put it back. Look at that. Can you see that? Got wires coming out. Wow, okay, so that's that. And then micro switch bracket, that's that. Wow, three screws and a spare. Perfect, okay. Let's see what we're doing. Step one, start by collecting the engine assembly put together in issue 24, plus the crankcase and two of the screws received with this issue. Let's put these in a safe place because I do not want to lose them. We need the screws, that's fine. Two. Put them in there. And we need this again. Okay. Look at that. That looks crazy. Okay. 
Step two, fit the base of the cylinder block onto the crankcase as shown in the picture, carefully aligning the part so that the screw holes used in step three and four fit together as shown. Okie dokie. I worked out eventually once I get there. Okay, so, and then we have that way. Ooh. Wow, look at that! That is heavy. Wow. <laughs> okay, right. Oh, we get. Step two, fit the base onto the crank as shown. We've done that. Um, step three, lay the assembly on its side as shown. So you can insert type B screw into the hole circled in blue. And the photo, tighten the screw fully. So they have it. In the picture, they've got it that way. And they're certain it in there. Perfect. This is where you need 15 hands. Let me put the screw in there. Make sure it's aligned. Step four, turn the engine over, insert the second into there. See the picture? That's it. Okay. Obviously, it's really important that I screw the screw in straight. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's still some screws that we need to put in. I think that's why it's a little bit loose. Wow. That is heavy. Look how big it is with my hand. You see? And there. And there. <laughs> and there. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to put it down there. So intricate. Step five, take the protective cover from part C received with issue 23 and fit it as shown in the photo. So that is in our little bag here. Have they got it? Okay. 
fit. No, okay, so that's that way. Then this picture, and then in this one, press four pins firmly into the matching holes to make sure the cover firmly stays in place, and if necessary, use spots of super glue to secure it. We've not used super glue yet. Um, goes that way, according to this picture here. Look at that. Step six, now take the oil filter from part D, put that down, and fit into the matching housing on the front of the crankcase. That's not the oil filter, that's this. <laughs> it nearly went wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, of the crankcase circled in blue, so that's that there. Note that the filter will only fit in one position because it has a projecting tab there. That must fit into the slot in the crankcase as indicated by the yellow arrow. So, it's this side, I believe. What have we got on this picture? Just going to double check. It's there. Okay. And which way have they got it? They've got a slot there. And that slot goes there. Only fit in one position because that was a projecting tab. Yes. Pull it back out. That's the right position because that tab. Aligns with that tab. I don't know if it's aligned. I'm going to leave it like that, just for now. Because that should slot in. That's fine. Perfect, look at that. With the oil filter in place, fit the pins on the brackets projecting from the pipe distributor, part B from issue 23, into the holes indicated by the yellow circles. To fit in the assembly should look like this.
let's give it a good squeeze. Perfect, look at that. <laughs> okay. Finally, take the pipe and the hose you assembled in issue 23 and fit into the hole circled in yellow as shown in the final result. So that. is there. Just make double check that slides in really nicely. That's best that it's ever slid in. Okay, perfect. Look at that. Final result after assembly, the engine should look like this. Check that the rigid pipe is located in the pipe distributor as shown. hole there that it goes into Excellent. So that's all the way in that hole there, and then them two are in there. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Um, keep the unused micro switch is bracket and the spare screws. Ah, hold, hold. After assembly, the engine should look like this. Check that the rigid pipe is located in the pipe distributor shown. We'll just double check that. If necessary, it can also be secured with a little glue. Note that the free end of the flexible hose will be fitted at a later stage. So that's that. Keep the unused mag switch. That. Its bracket and spare screw is safely for later use. Okay. these in our pile. Let's put these in here with all the others and then let's store these in here. Okay so there are the screws in there um, and then what we're going to do is put the mag switch in there. We'll have to remember where we've put it. And that's this one done. Okay. Right, I'm going to put that to one side there because we might need it. Last but not least, I'm going to put that there. Last but not least, issue 26. Our last packet. Yes. Right, let's open this. Okay. A is crunch shank end knot. So we've got that there. Crankshank and cover, which is 
this one B that's B clutch slave cylinder that's that one and then drain screw that's that well, that's a pretty colour in there right <laughs> let's see what we need to do okay I still need this okay take the engine assembly from the last sessions together with a micro switch its bracket and a type B screw all of which were provided with issue 25 let's take the micro switch back out and type B screws that's one, and that's two, type two. Okay, just in case we need to square, spare. <laughs> um, all of which were provided, you'll also need a screwdriver, which we have here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Step two, turn the engine over to access the square opening and locate the circular recess identified by the yellow circle in the photo. We've got it that way. And it's there. Fit the micro switch bracket into the recess shown in step two making sure it is the same way round as the photo and then fix it with a type B screw. This looks intricate. It's that way in the photo. that way and you're going to fix it with a type B screw photo it's fiddly Perfect. Okay. And next into the recession step two. Yeah. Next, press the mag switch into its bracket so the tabs on the side of the clip position as shown in the photo. Oh, see, 
that it clicks <laughs> oh my gosh look clicky 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 look can you see that can you hear it oh my god that is so cute okay we click yes i'll stop playing that was <laughs> always um okay step five turn the engine onto its side and identify the tool holes so called in yellow the crankshaft and the part a has two locating pins that fit into these holes so we're this side now and they've got it there that way perfect let's have a look this Press the crankshank end nut into the holes, shown in step five. That was easy. Look at that. We got it there. Ooh. Okay. Um, step seven. Next, fit the crankshaft end cover over the end nut, pressing its four location pins into the corresponding holes in the crank crankcase. Again, use a little glue to secure the part if necessary. So they have it that way. Yeah, okay, let's put it in. That went in so easy, look at that. Okay. Step eight, take the clutch slave cylinder. I'm assuming that's that. Um, and fix into the position marked with a yellow circle by pressing its locating pins into the matching holes in the casting. We've got the same gas there. Oh. Okay, we're getting there. Look at that. It's gone in nicely. I should make sure. Okay. Matching casting. And then finally press the drain screw. Look at that. Part D, into the hole circulated in the photo. The rear part of the casting should now look like this. So that's that. That goes across there. So, I believe that goes in there. Perfect. Okay. Done. Wow. Look at that. Wow. I'm so pleased with that. Okay, that's that done. Let's put that there. So, let's make sure that is the end of that. It is. That's 26. Let's put that away. We have a brilliant end product there. I'm so pleased. Um, and I'm pleased at what we've done in this session. Thank you so, so much for following these videos. Thank you, Tony, for all your tips. Um, the screws did actually go in better with WFD40 in them. So thank you for that. I know you've left me a couple more tips, which I will have a look at. Um, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, please help me in expanding these videos to others by subscribing, liking and sharing. 
and also hit that button if you want to be reminded whenever a video comes out. If you would also like to give me some comments and feedback, I will always reply. So, looking forward to doing part 7 with you and I will see you then. Bye for now.